I had started my day off with the plan to move all the horses around to their winter pasture. But as I did chores throughout the day, I noticed one of the horses was not acting normal. I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to show you guys what I do when I have a horse that's colicking. I've stumbled across a few videos on YouTube that show people dealing with colicking horses and they have probably the worst advice imaginable. I've had horses for a really long time and I also was a veterinary technician for quite a while, so I have a little bit of insight into what the vet expects when you call them and let them know that your horse is possibly colicking. I keep my horses out on pasture most of the time, so I have very few instances where the horses do colic. They're able to roam around and stretch their legs and run and play, and that seems to keep everything moving like it should. For anyone not familiar with the term colic, it's just a general catch-all term that describes abdominal pain in horses and it can have many different causes. I had finished feeding everybody breakfast, I went to do some chores, and when I was done I noticed that Gus was laying all by himself out in the pasture. Horses are herd animals so when one is away from the herd it's always a little bit suspicious. And typically if one of the horses in the herd is laying down there'll be another horse or two standing watching over them. This is little Gus. When I bought him, he had really bad ulcers that were creating a pretty significant bucking problem for him. That is why he ended up at the horse sale. It's been a few years and they haven't come back, but it's always in the back of my mind when he's not feeling well. The first sign that your horse may be colicking is they're just doing something out of the norm. And little Gus usually does not lay down and take naps all alone. Some people may ignore these little signs, but I take them very seriously because I want to treat them before it possibly gets worse. As colic progresses and the horse becomes more painful, some other signs to look out for are an elevated heart rate, an increase in respirations, an elevated temperature. You might also notice your horse sweating, pawing the ground, laying down and getting up, rolling, standing very stretched out. They also may not be interested in eating like normal. If you observe any of these behaviors in your horse, it's important to write it down what time they started so that if you do end up calling a veterinarian for help, you can tell them how long it's been going on. Gus was a very fractious horse when I first got him, but he is much more relaxed now that I've had him for a few years and he is settled in. But just like any other horse, the first thing that I'm going to do when I'm evaluating them to see if I need to contact a vet is I'm going to check their heart rate. The average resting heart rate for a normal horse is between 28 and 40 beats per minute. I didn't want to go back to the barn to get my stethoscope so I just felt for his pulse underneath his jawbone. I didn't have a way to keep track of time with me but in a pinch you can just compare your heart rate to the horse's heart rate. A resting heart rate for a human is between 60 and 100 beats per minute. I was also checking his respirations while I was feeling for his heart rate. A normal respiration rate for a horse is between 10 and 14 breaths per minute. He did have a normal heart rate and respiration rate, but I still wanted to check him out a little bit farther. If he wasn't colicking, he was having himself a pretty good nap, so I felt a little bit bad getting him up to assess him further, but it was something that I needed to do to make sure that he was okay. You can also take their temperature to assess their health, but since his pulse and respirations were normal, I decided to skip that part. I did want to go in and see if I could hear any gut sounds on both sides. Typically the vet will check four quadrants and I'm just going to check the upper left and right. Without a stethoscope I really don't want him to kick me in the head if he is feeling pretty painful. A normal horse will have some gut sounds that sound like gurgling as everything moves through. And I was able to hear this guy's right away. I was feeling pretty confident at this point that he was just enjoying the warm sunshine and taking a nap and all the other horses probably just left him. I am however going to go ahead and check to see his capillary refill time just for good measure. In a healthy horse it will be 1-2 to two seconds. A horse that has been colicking for quite a while might have decreased blood flow and really pale gums. Or they might show a toxic line which is a very bad sign in a colicking horse and it is an emergency. I put a note in my phone with my little assessment of his vitals just in case he gets worse. I went over to check the water because it was a pretty hot day and I wanted to make sure the horses had enough to drink. After assessing your horse, if you do feel that they are colicking, it's important to take away their food source. One of the main types of colic that horses get is called an impaction. 
and this is when a ball of food gets stuck somewhere in their digestive tract. It can happen if they eat their food really quickly or if they don't drink enough water. So it does happen a lot in winter. Some horses do not like to drink freezing cold water, but if you continue to allow them to eat while they have an impaction, it can make it a lot worse. Little Gus had some pretty good vital signs, so I'm just gonna observe him while I do the rest of my chores for the day. If I felt it was necessary, I may have administered an anti-inflammatory. If you live in a place where your vet can be out quickly, they might prefer that you don't administer any drugs to the horse because it can make it more difficult for them to assess where the horse is actually hurting and the cause of the colic. Any treatments laid out by the vet are going to depend heavily on the type of colic that they suspect the horse is going through. I continued to do chores around the barn and a few hours later it looked like Gus was back to his normal self. He is one that gets very excited for dinner and although it's a few hours away he is waiting for me to deliver his meals. One thing that I have unfortunately seen shown in some videos on YouTube is people performing medical procedures on their own horses. I consider myself a fairly competent technician and I have a pretty decent skill level. There is no way I would ever feel comfortable guessing what is going on with my horse without the actual vet doing a proper exam. Every horse owner needs to have a plan in place in case your horse does happen to be colicking. I went ahead and I attached my trailer to my truck just in case little Gus took a turn for the worse. I am really lucky that there are a number of vets in the town that I live in that I have a close relationship with but in the event that they couldn't get me in, I need to be prepared to haul my horse out of town to a vet that might be available to treat him immediately. In the end, Gus's colic scare ended up just being him wanting to take a nap in the sun on a unseasonably warm day in Montana. Although I got completely off track for what I had planned for the day, I am glad that little Gus is doing fine. Scarlett seemed really excited about the thought of going on a trailer ride. She was jumping all around and winning to the other horses. We only have a few more nice days left until it's going to be full on winter in Montana. I really wanted to go pick up Mort and Skeletor from their summer pasture, but it looks like I'm going to run out of daylight. The sun is setting around 5 o'clock right now and that's just not enough time for me to bring the horses over and have them calm down before it gets really cold in the evening. I did have a few hours left in the day, so I did end up doing some more chores. I also got everything ready for the big moving day tomorrow. I have been testing out doing a few more vlog style videos for you guys. I really like doing the makeover videos of the horses that I've had for quite a while, but I think it's important for everyone to see the day in, day out things that go on behind the scenes that make all of that possible. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy these vlog style videos. I'm planning to do a few more as I get into training these guys, hopefully before the snow comes. If you aren't already subscribed, make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.